Hey, and welcome back. Back in November, I was approached by a friend of my dad's who asked if I could help him clear out some of his son's old percussion equipment. His son had since grown up, given up playing, and they were trying to downsize on clutter in their home. I went down to meet him at his house and saw a number of different things including a drum set, extra cymbals, a bell kit, a practice marimba, and various other one-off drums. Among this collection were two vintage snares that immediately caught my eye. He let me know that these actually belonged to his father-in-law, who never actually played drums, but seemed to have a knack for just collecting things. When I grabbed the first, I recognized it immediately as a Gretsch chrome over brass, most likely from the 1960s. I'm a huge fan of Gretsch drums, and I knew I'd want to try and keep this one for my personal collection. We worked out a deal that if I could sell all the other equipment and get a certain price, I could keep this drum for free, and actually still have some extra profit on my end. After a few months of Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and reverb selling, I was able to clear out all the equipment and was now the owner of this great vintage drum. It wasn't exactly in great shape, but it really wasn't in terrible shape either. The rims had some light pitting, and the shell was mostly fine outside of some grime and wear that could be buffed out, but the only part that was beyond repair was the snare throw-off. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of throws on vintage snares, and it was probably a blessing in disguise that I had to replace this. The original throw was in such bad shape that I really couldn't put it in the off position, and it was pretty much always left engaged. But in the spirit of showing you before and after of this drum, I did go ahead and take it over to the kit and do a brief demo. The stock issue throw with this drum was the Gretsch micro-sensitive throw-off, and luckily since that time, Gretsch has continued to make improvements on this throw while maintaining the same hole pattern for mounting it to a shell. I purchased one of these from drumsonsale.com, and it set me back about $75 plus shipping. Within a week, the throw-off showed up at my house, and I began the process of stripping this snare to bring it back to life. After disassembling this drum, I took all the smaller bits like tension rods, lugs, screws, and the butt plate and dropped them in a jar and filled that jar up with WD-40. I'll typically leave these parts in here for a day or longer to let the WD-40 do its magic on the rust. In this case, I ended up leaving it in here for a few days. In the meantime, I took the die cast hoops and cleaned them off by using some aluminum foil. I learned this trick from R. David R. and it's been a super handy method of getting surface level rust and grime off of metal hoops. Once both hoops had been cleaned up with aluminum foil, I took some Brasso to polish them and get a nice finish on them. I'm not really sure if this step is essential to getting it back in playing order, but if everything is already ripped apart, it doesn't take much extra effort to polish them a bit before reassembling. With the hoops cleaned, I moved on to the shell and repeated the same process, except this time I was much more gentle with the aluminum foil, just to avoid any potential scratching to the shell. I don't think I had much to worry about with that, but the shell wasn't all that dirty to begin with, so I just took some extra care along the way. The internal muffler was a bit trickier to clean, as the felt kept me from dunking it in WD-40 like the other smaller parts, and the shape of it really made it difficult to clean up with the foil and brasso. I did use a toothbrush with the brasso to try and clear away some of the rust, and it worked okay, but I'm glad I won't be seeing this from the outside of the shell, since it's not nearly as clean as the rest of the parts. After a few days, I was able to come back and clear out all of the parts from the WD-40 to clean up with a toothbrush and dry out. If you're smart, you can actually save the WD-40 and reuse it, so I always do. After brushing and drying these parts off, I let them dry out further for a few hours before going any further, but after that it was time to reassemble this drum. 
This part can be pretty tedious and time consuming, and a few of the pieces like the internal muffler and the strainer butt plate can be tricky to get just right, but be patient and don't over tighten these old threads. If you're being extra thorough, you can also add some white lithium grease to those threaded parts, just to be careful. I had originally planned to purchase some of the Remo Classic Fit heads for this drum, but I have a friend who recently switched from being an artist for Evans to Remo, and he gave me a whole stack of unused Evans heads that he had lying around. I used this standard Rezo head and a coated G1, and it seemed to fit on the snare okay. They're a little snug, but they still twist and slide around the shell fine. I added the same white lithium grease to the tension rods, which has pretty much become standard practice for me now when I put together any drum. It really does make a noticeable difference, and when I went to go tune this drum into the higher ranges, I didn't feel any resistance from the threads. I did purchase a new set of snare wires, because although the original wires would have been cool to have on this drum, they were pretty beat up and rusted. I know a lot of these drums come standard issue with 42 strand wires, but I opted for a set of 30 strand wires, which is still way higher than I usually use. Once I had this drum assembled, it was time to bring it over to the kit and hear how it sounds. All in all, I was extremely surprised by the results of this drum. I knew I'd probably enjoy the sound, but what I didn't expect was how practical this drum would sound for the kinds of music I play. I guess I originally suspected this drum to thrive in the lower, medium ranges, but really I think it sounded most dialed in when I cranked it. It has a killer ping to it, almost like a built-in reverb, and the diecast hoops really make this thing cut with the rim clicks. When I was messing around with the tuning and muffling, I almost got this thing into marching drum territory when it comes to articulation and pitch. I have a large collection of vintage snares, and I typically like to use them for recording, but I won't take them out on gigs just because I consider them fragile and irreplaceable to a degree. This drum is much different, especially with the new throw-off. The snare is pretty bulky compared to my other drums, and when I took it to a scale, I was shocked to see that it came in at over 10 pounds. Like I mentioned before, 
I'm not a huge fan of older throws, and the same can be said for modern replicas of old throws. But this thing is really solid, and I don't have any concerns about it loosening up on the bandstand. I like the button on top that keeps it locked into the on position, and considering how much I've tinkered with it during my initial trial of it, I don't see it crapping out on me if I took it out for gigs. My only bummer about the new throw is that the top of the lever sits above the rim of the drum, so if you were to rest the drum upside down on a table to tune it or rehead it, you'd be resting it on that lever which I don't think would be ideal. One of the cooler features on these older Gretsch drums that they've brought back recently is the dual purpose vent hole and drum key holder. I had one of these Gretsch drum keys around and if you insert it into the vent hole, it locks into place. I'm not sure if people leave it in there for any sort of sonic reason, like covering up the vent hole to get a different sound, but I love the convenience of having the drum key right there to grab it. Also, one of the last things that made this drum really special to me personally is the old tag from the drum shop it originally came from. It used to be pretty standard practice to add a small tag on the outside of the shell on the drums for the music store or drum shop which it originally was sold from. And in this case, the tag on this shell reads Faust Music in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I live about an hour north of Milwaukee, and although I wasn't drumming in the heyday of this store, I actually was able to go there when I was 19 living in Milwaukee for a summer performing gig. I met the owner, Bill Faust, and his reputation was that of an older get off my lawn type guy. But his store was legendary. He told me plenty of stories of great jazz drummers like Max Roach and Buddy Rich shopping there, and about all the great American drum companies which he sold. But the most memorable part of my conversation with him was him asking me what kind of drums I had, and when I replied Yamaha, he opted to kick me out of his store for not using American drums. He passed away a few years later, and the liquidation of his store drew drum collectors and sellers from all over the country. I still see drums around from time to time with his tag on it, and I'll never forget my one encounter with him back in 2010. When I was at the Chicago Vintage Drum Show this last year, I saw one of these drums at a booth and resisted buying it on the spot, thinking I'd come back later in the day and make an offer. When I did finally return to that booth, I literally watched the seller negotiate a great deal for this drum to a man directly ahead of me, and of course he bought it. I was really bummed, but figured another one would come up at some point, and it's crazy how just six months later it all worked itself out for an even better deal. I know my clickbait title of getting this drum for free might be a little misleading, and there was certainly some time and work that was traded in part for this drum, but to come away with this drum how I did still feels like an incredible deal. I spent a little over $100 purchasing the new throw and snare wires, so I'm more than happy to pay that for now having this drum in playing shape. If you have a similar story about acquiring a drum like this, or anything else you'd like to chime in on, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you gave it a like, and considered subscribing to my channel for regular video releases to come. Until next time, thanks.